This week on the Computer Chronicles, how to design a great website. We'll show you how to use Macromedia Flash to jazz up your website. We'll look at several new graphic and animation tools from Adobe. You'll meet an expert on JavaScript who will show us how to add smarts to your website. And we'll meet a man who has been called the guru of website usability, Jacob Nielsen. How to design a great website, coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by pc to pc the online computer migration service from PC First. Moving files, applications, and preferences from your old computer to your new one. Additional support is provided by Upside Events, presenting the Digital Lifestyle Revolution Conference, where people and technology intersect. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Well, for some people, creating, designing, and building a website is still a difficult hurdle to overcome. There are some simple online tools for creating basic personal websites, but the intricacies of creating a really cool website are still a mystery to many people. Things like adding Flash, Java applets, optimizing your user interface, making sure your site loads fast. These are the things we'll look at today as we show you how to build a killer website. There actually is a new online web creation site that is very powerful. It's called moonfruit.com, and here to tell us about it is Norman Myrowitz, president of Macromedia Ventures. Hi, Norm. Hey, Stuart. Macromedia, you guys have known, are known for Flash, of course, which mm -hmm. is one of the coolest things we see on a website. For people who may no, not know exactly what Flash is, give us a couple examples of Flash as we see it on the web right now. Okay, great. Well, people use Macromedia's Dreamy for, cre for creating websites, and they use Flash for creating rich media in the mm -hmm. websites. People know it a lot these days because of entertainment. Here's an example of The Critic, which used to be on TV, but now is exclusively in Flash. Yeah, Jennifer. So a lot of the animation nice stuff, which of course is a little easier to do on the web with, with Flash, is using your guys' technology right. to watch TV on the web. Right, production values of TV, but it runs over low, low bandwidth yeah. on modem. All right, so we're familiar with sort of the entertainment type things. Let's talk about some commercial applications. People are in fact using Flash increasingly in the advertising arena, right, to make ads more interesting on mm -hmm. the web. Right, Coca-Cola uses it for branding, for example. This is what people are um, doing, so you can really get the brand across. So you go to the Coca-Cola page, a little more exciting stuff is happening. And then people are also using it, CNET, for mm -hmm. example, and ZDNet are using this for creating rich media examples inside of their web page. Here's an example of Oracle's ad where you can have that. You want to just scroll that up so we can see the rest of the Sure, you can have that. All right, so this is, B this is the, like the new version of the ad banner, so the boring ad banner. Click it and leave the site. Actually watch a moving ad inside the site. Moving ad, and now I can find out about Oracle 9i right like that without having to. Uh, so it's a living window inside that page. Living window. I don't leave the site, so the advertiser is pleased right. and the site owner is pleased. Okay. Uh, now you have another interesting example, uh, a little more subtle use of Flash inside an online bank. Mm -hmm. If I... Uh, Look at that online bank. One of the things that Flash is being used more and more for is applications. There are 300 million people out there that can actually view Flash, 96% of the web. Wow. And Flash allows you to create seamless experiences. Instead of the browser refreshing all the time where yeah. you have this break in the experience, you can create an immersive experience. All right, so how are you using Flash on this bank site? Well, here's a bank, and I'm going to launch this um, bank. And imagine this is an okay. ATM, but you can actually um, Accessing banking operate system. through it and there's a voice that's actually telling you how to operate. I can actually transfer funds, and I can do it. This doesn't look like a, a website. Yeah. This looks like um, an ATM with voice and stuff. So, so again, the idea is you're, you're getting out of that old page metaphor, leave this to go here, leave that to go here, stay in the bank, the virtual bank, if you will, and do different things in that Exactly, and you build that using the Flash authoring tool. All right, now uh, show us one uh, another multimedia example of how you would create you know, educational things or entertainment things using the traditional Flash tools. Well, this is something that uh, Business 2.0 used to actually explain the difference between the PC world and the wireless world. And this is where you do storytelling, which you normally wouldn't do on a web page. Sure. You use audio, you use animation. All right, now, now briefly show us, using the traditional sort of software tool, Flash Studio, how I might go in and modify that thing and what that interface would look like. Yeah. If you're a professional, you would actually use the Flash authoring tool, mm -hmm. and it uses a timeline metaphor to actually stage the different animations and audio. And it's as simple as going in and clicking on various things to um, change this. So I can change this to Computer Chronicle. Sure. 
But I mean, this is, this is, as you say, this is for the professional. I mean, we see lots of windows, lots of parameters, it's kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. You got to really learn. There's, there's a little training curve here, right? Yeah, you need some talent. Yeah. Let's talk then about the next thing, which is what I mentioned, moonfruit.com, in which you've taken a lot of this capability, put it on a live website, sort of more drag and drop, you know, point and click, where, where normal people can actually accomplish some of the same things. Okay, well, let's go to um, moonfruit.com. Moonfruit. And here's moonfruit.com. And I'm logged in as myself, and uh -huh. here are my favorite sites. And then this is a site that I built myself. Okay, so, so show that to us. Yeah. So Moonfruit has actually used Flash to create this very sophisticated application. So they've used the Flash authoring tool, but then they've made it so end users can actually create their right. own. So that's sites. Like sites in Flash. We're using Flash to create other Flash. Create other things. Flash. So this is an end user site for pop music, and I have a home page. So this is something you would have built in Moonfruit. I would have built myself in Moonfruit. Here's the concert um, pictures I can put up. Um, here's a CD database that I can actually create. And that's pretty cool. And if I go to the home page, this is how you edit it. This is how easy it is to actually create your own page. So I can come over here. I can simply touch on welcome and say, change that to hello, Stuart. And you can mess around with that. I mean, flip it, rotate it, do kinds of cool here, things Here, like I'm going to scale it. I can rotate and it. It's obviously a lot simpler interface than we looked at before. Right. I yeah. can add an item if I'd like. Okay. The site is moonfruit.com. Mm -hmm. I can go in there and use it for free yep. and design a cool site and put Flash in it. Exactly. Norm, thank you very thanks, much. Thanks, Stuart. Well, the key to a really attractive and engaging website, of course, is graphics. And one company that's been around for a long time providing great graphics tools is Adobe. Programs like Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere, etc. Well, Adobe is now coming out with new design tools for jazzing up your website. And here to show them to us is Mark Eamon of Adobe. Hi, Mark. Hi. Okay, a couple of things we want to talk about. You have something called Go Live. Yeah. Uh, show us uh, the basics of what you can do with Go Live and how it works. It's your tool. Sure. Well, Adobe Go Live is really a tool for creating cutting-edge websites that the most discerning, discriminating web users, uh, web developers use. And what I'd like to show you is how it can also be very effective for use by uh, just someone who's starting out building websites. Okay. We've put in some things here that allow you to. Um, so we're in Go Live right now. That's, that's right. We're, we're in Go Live, and one of the un thing, unique things we have here is a layout grid. The layout grid allows a user to position an element absolutely anywhere on the page, sort of like the old desktop publishing mm -hmm. metaphor, um, which is something that is non-trivial if you're not using a, if, you're, if you are using yeah. another product. So, the, I mean, the point is you have the, you know, the Photoshop history here, so you guys are sort of taking that, integrating it inside the Go Live tool. Is that the idea? Absolutely, and I'd like to show you next a, a really tight piece of integration that is, uh, again, unique. Because we share the technologies, what I, I'd like to do is show you how we can uh, take an image that was created maybe for another purpose. So here's an image that is 1.7 megabytes, a Photoshop file. We want to put it on our website. So a monster file that might have been designed for print somewhere. We don't care about the size of the file. Exactly. Well, you do care on the You're web. You're not going to get away with that here. Exactly. So we have this tool in, in Go Live called the Smart Objects. It brings up this Safe for Web dialog box. And if you've used any of half a dozen Adobe products, this, this is very familiar to you. So your learning curve is zero. You can set the compression that you wish for this particular image. In this case, I'm also going to want to make the image a little bit smaller mm -hmm. on my website. So let's go ahead and make that smaller. I'll save it to my desktop to make things happen a little more quickly here. And again, I can move it around anywhere thanks to my layout grid. But here's something that's really cool and unique. Suppose you want it to now, as I realize, I've made it a little too small. Right, so you compressed it, but you've also compressed it. <laughs> I've, right? I've made it this, the size a little yeah, bit too, too small. small for that size. And yeah. now if I were in any other web design application, I would, in stretching this image, end up with the jaggies. I mean, we've all seen that. Right, those right. So you really want to go back to the native file originally and work with that one? Well, this is where you had to, but now for productivity's uh -huh. sake, because this is what we call a smart object, all I need to do is resize within Go Live, and I don't have to see that dialog box uh -huh. pop up there. That said that it was going back to the original Photoshop file mm. to resample the same compression that I set before, the same quality of image, but now at this new size. Okay, so again, we get to make it larger without paying the price of making it larger, essentially. And saving a lot of time by not having to switch applications. Yeah. All right, let's go over here to what you have on, by the way, your brand new G4 Power Book. Very cool, <laughs> very cool indeed. Slick looking. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and on this machine, you have what, live motion? Yes, I do. Which is a way to create the kinds of flash animations we just saw before? 
Live Motion is Adobe's tool for creating uh, Flash uh, files. Okay. And uh, it, again, shares a lot of technology with other Adobe applications. All right, now, mo most people think it's pretty complicated to create some of these things. We saw one easy version over there. Show us how mm -hmm. easy it is to use uh, Live Motion. Sure. Well, we go ahead to the screen here. We have the uh, beginnings of an introduction animation to, to a website. And at the bottom of the screen, we have the timeline. The timeline basically moves through time. And I've got a few elements here. So you move back and forth. And you can see um, that I have different layers of information. But what I want to do is, is show you how easy it is to just start with, uh, with some new animation. Again, I have a document on my desktop. This is, again, a Photoshop file. Mm -hmm. It's very popular. Over 90% right. of the web pages have uh, images created with Photoshop on them. So I simply drag and drop. And I end up with an image on the screen that is this Photoshop animation, actually a Photoshop uh, photograph, right, right. which originally ha actually has two layers. The sky is one layer and the skier is another layer. You probably don't want to animate the sky, right? <laughs> well, it would look a little funny to have the sky move so quickly. So again, thanks to the integration between our products, we can convert the layers into separate objects. So I can now, in this case, delete just the sky. Okay. And, and now you want to animate the skier guy. Let's use the uh, skier here and animate him. We can, of course, resize him. And what I can do here is uh, by point out the timeline, automatically I have a layer, and it's called skier because of the integration mm -hmm. between our products. It remembers the way I named it in Photoshop. And I've just twirled down these little keyframes. And the keyframes basically setting a point in time. Right, so you're going to create the little path for the animation exactly. here? Exactly. So the first thing I'm telling it is at this point in time, you see the little black dot, right. this is where I want you to be, X and Y coordinates on the right. screen. Next, I'll move my cursor to the end of the animation and just move this guy down roughly the okay. other side. And that's it. I have done the animation. And show us that it really works. View that. Play it. Here comes the first part of the animation, and here comes the guy wow. flying across the screen. That easy. All right, uh, real quick, or out of time, what does it cost for these tools like Go Live and, uh, and, and Live Motion? Adobe Go Live uh, is available for less than $300, okay. plus a special promo. There are a lot of Photoshop users out there. If you upgrade to Not 6 nice, you yeah. can get it for $99. Cool. Cool. And Live Motion's less than 100 bucks. Mark, right promo. thank you very much. Coming up next, a guide to using JavaScript on your website. Don't go away. We'll be right back. If you really want a hot website that does things and is interactive, you need JavaScript. And here to give us some of the basics on using JavaScript on your website is Danny Goodman, author of the JavaScript Bible, a thousand pages worth of JavaScript. So you must be the author, the expert of the Bible there. We'll see. Okay. Danny, first of all, let's define our terms. It's called JavaScript, and people talk about Java. What exactly is JavaScript, and how is it different from plain Java? There are two very different technologies. Java was developed by Sun, and it's used primarily on the server programming now. JavaScript is a general purpose, standards-based language uh, that was developed at Netscape, and it's used extensively now in web browsers, most of the web modern browsers we use now. All right, now what is the value of putting some JavaScript applications into my website? When and how should I use JavaScript? The way I like to use it is as an additive to, uh, the, to your content so that someone who has a, a script-enabled browser has a better experience than someone who does not have a script-enabled browser. All right, well, let's explain what you mean by that. I mean, so what are some of the things you can do by inserting JavaScript? Like, uh, I know you have one example of updating, making sure things are timely rather than just sort of static, stale content. How does that work? Well, at my own website, I have uh, uh, pages that list the errata for my books. Okay. And uh, you may have uh, visited six months ago, and I've done many updates irregularly over, the, over that period. Okay. And what you want to see is what's new for you. And okay, so without the JavaScript, I go there and I would see all the same stuff I saw before. There. With JavaScript, it's smart enough to know when the last time I was there right. and only count from there and on. And new items are flagged, like on this page. New items uh, show with a little icon that indicate that this is new for you. Uh, and none of this information is, is stored on the server. It's all done locally. Okay, so essentially the JavaScript now is tagging the specific things that are important to me as the individual user. So there's a big benefit there. Okay, what other examples of things we could do by inserting uh, JavaScript as an additive on our website? Um, for instance, uh, if you are using, uh, if you have uh, 
visitors who are primarily JavaScript enabled browser users. Okay. Uh, you can enhance the, the experience. Now, now let's explain what right. that means. What is a JavaScript enabled browser? It's pretty much any browser from Netscape 2 forward and Internet Explorer 3 forward. Well, most people have it. Yes. All right, so what can you do with this example? This is a case of a, of a little calculator that I in, enhanced the interface to it so that you know, if you want to find out the value of a, a resistor component, mm -hmm. for instance, we're doing things here locally by changing images and performing calculations that don't have to go back to the server. We're manipulating all of the objects on the screen here and locally and instantaneously. All right, so what we're doing here, instead of just doing the calculated numbers, you're actually also in real time changing the appropriate colors on the resistor so we can see what those numbers represent. And we're using the, t the, the, uh, the brains of the computer, the local computer. Right, again, not out on the server, it's sitting right in here. Now let's talk about, uh, we're not gonna do this in a couple of minutes, how you create JavaScript. Just give us a simple example of adding a piece of JavaScript code. Well, JavaScript goes in the HTML documents that you create. So here is a very simple HTML document. Okay. And here within the body and part, the there is a script tag here and then some script statements here. In this case, these statements will generate some content as the page loads about the, the browser and so on. When you load this page in the browser, you get a page that looks like this. Not very impressive, but that's a very simple example. And it's telling you that in this case, we're running right. four seven. But again, sort of an update example to make it sort of live and interactive and relate to your particular experience. And the content is dynamically generated. All right, now are there things, we you know in HTML, there are sort of lots of uh, programs you can use that don't require you to know the code, that sort of just let you point and click and do things. Is there anything like that for JavaScript? Sure, a lot of the WYSIWYG HTML editors like Dreamweaver uh -huh. uh, will let you do some of the common uh, uh, JavaScript functions like mouse rollovers that change the image mm -hmm. uh, without you having to write any code for that. All right, so you can do some limited things and right. some of those. But but if you just want to do it yourself, you can use a text editor to generate the HTML yeah, and the it's script. Not that complicated. And, you know, no fancy uh, well, environment. One of the issues with JavaScripting, of course, is incompatib incompatibility issues between a Netscape and an Internet Explorer. How do you deal with that? Well, there are a lot of incompatibility uh, factors. But one of the ways you can do that is, is for, exam for exa example, the uh, Dreamweaver tool uh, for those rollovers, it generates code that will work on a wide range of browsers. Another approach that you can use if you're doing your own code is using libraries of code uh -huh. that act as an intermediary between your simple code and all the complexity. All right, so they know where they are and add the appropriate library to solve that right. problem. Last example is something we, we call data collection lookup. Show an, an example of what that would do using uh, a JavaScript. This is something I had to do uh, myself for the uh, index page to the fourth edition of the JavaScript Bible. I have over 300 listings and I wanted to create an easy way of accessing them and knowing which ones are compatible to your so browser. So what are we looking at here? So this is the index page and you choose the, whatever chapter you want and it lists the, the, uh, the uh, listings for that particular chapter, and it highlights which ones in color are compatible with this browser. And this is something that might have been a collection of all these separate pages. You can bring all this information together in one sort of This entire page. page is one 37K document. Not bad. Thank you very much, Danny. Thank you. All right, well, you can have all the exotic elements ever invented on your website and still have a lousy website, one that's hard to use, slow to load, or just plain confusing. Here to guide us through the secrets of web usability is one of the world's leading experts on the subject, Jacob Nielsen. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you, Stuart. All right, let's go through some examples. I want to just call up some websites, and I want you to play critic here. You can be the movie critic Definitely. here. Tell I me why it's good or why it's bad, okay? And let's start with one Mont Blanc, and I know uh, right. you have uh, some issues with this one. Well, we'll pull it up here and see what happens. And, and what uh, is this website for? It's for pens, very nice pens, I okay, should so say. Okay, so you buying the Mont Blanc uh, pens. Yeah, they're very nice pens, but see, we still don't actually know what Where it's about. Where is my experience? Right? We're just waiting and waiting, so it's loading and it's loading and it's loading. So it's trying to put this big flash opening up. Yeah, it is, and we're still waiting, and we probably even have a fast connection here in the studio. Yep. So now we've finally got their logo and some little shading thing, and I'm asking, was this worth waiting <laughs> for? And I say no. Yeah, so I mean, but a lot of sites do this. They just put all this cutesy yeah. junk up, which the guy who wrote it may love, but a user, user, you're gone to another exactly. website by now. Don't put these barriers in my way. Get me right to where gotcha. I, what I want. And, and one more thing, they pop up a separate window. Why do that? <laughs> I mean, behind it is my original window, but right, why do the right. separate window? Stupid. Doesn't do you know. All right, that's going to interesting, the Sony website. Right. Now, you would think that'd be pretty cool, but you have some issues with that one. Right, just close off the Mont Blanc website and let's go to Sony. Well, first of all, 
you got to actually pick it out of a W in your bookmark list because they happen to call the site welcome. So if you're looking Sony. for Sony, it comes up under W, <laughs> exactly. not S, which is pretty dumb. Now I only have a few in this particular list, but if you have many bookmarks, yeah. many All right, people so let's do. pull up the Sony site. So we pull out the Sony site. What are the problems here? Well, we're still waiting, but it's not actually nearly as bad as the previous one. But what I really want to do here is to buy a cable for my Sony laptop, which I happen to have. It's a very nice machine. Okay. And to do that, I got to go to this tiny little menu, and I'm not getting now it's postage stamp size right. to actually scroll through. And of all course, the you're features. not going to see the word cable anywhere. No, no, no. I got to kind of pick it out on electronics. So you have so, to guess. But the entire rest of the screen space is wasted, and the little tiny menu mm. is my only bet or only kind of way of managing uh -huh. the website. So I ask for the computers, and I go to get their computers. And, and you haven't gotten any farther, no. really. And notice this is a completely different design. So if I learned the first design, I now have to learn something new. And you still don't know where cables are. I have no clue. And i got to look at these tiny little pictures down here yeah. and remember which type of computers. So I'm going to click it. on that. And you know, it's, it's quite a lot of clicks. Until I, you and you still haven't through. gotten where you want to be. Oh, no. All right. It's fifth, five, about six more clicks, actually. <laughs> Let's go to <laughs> another site, the Pepsi site. Right. Pepsi.com. Again, you would think this would be a pretty cool site, but you have issues with that one. Well, Pepsi, I mean, maybe to be fair to them, it's hard to see what they really can do because you cannot take a you know, taste test on the web. But yeah, what are you going to do on a Pepsi website? What are you going to do, right? So they really don't have anything really, I mean, they have these little blinking, moving things, but not anything And, of course, really you don't useful. get to see everything that's up there right now because of the way it's oh, designed. Oh, we have to scroll forever. Look, when, when I scroll here, only about half of my, my screen space is really active. The other half is, you know, part on the top and yeah, part to the yeah. side are kind of being being wasted, being static because they're using frames, which is usually a bad thing to no. do. All right, let's go to another one, the USPS right. side, the Postal we'll Service We'll go to the side. Post Office, or Postal Service as they call it, and this is very fast, I should say that. Yeah. Another thing that's very good about this is the main thing in web design is really give people the what they're there yeah. for and why am I going to the post office well to find well often the postal rates and, and it's, it's right there in front right of you. Right here in front of me. Click, boom, you got boom, the answer. Calculate domestic postage, international postage, no. However, a bad thing is if I want the international postage rates, it's gonna give me a PDF file. And so wait, 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 which wait. Which is wait. really annoying. It loads up a separate program. I and have do you have that. the PDF plug in? Yeah. Oh, blah, many blah, people blah. don't. Sure. And PDFs are just get banned from the web, <laughs> except for if you want to download a big manual yeah, to print yeah. it out. And who needs it? Just look at postage yeah, uh, it's rates. Just, it's just really, and it's even only one page, actually. And why is it a .com? That's ridiculous. confusing in the first place, right? Yeah, it really should be .gov, so yeah. they, they did made that mistake as well. Let's go to another one, Williams-Sonoma, which is a site I know you think is well-designed. Right. I think this is actually quite a nice site because they have uh, you know, a lot of nice little clean photographs. And notice how fast they come down because they're very small uh -huh. and very clean, and they really give an overview of all the different things they sell. And what happens if you drill down here? Let's me click on, on dinnerware just as an example, and it'll show me what they're selling in that category. And again, very fast, very clean photographs. Right. And look down here how this photograph really helps me understand what they mean sure, by serving sure. pieces. So it's a good use of graphics, yeah. not just to be cute, but to actually solve the problem. Actually communicate, help the user, which right. it's about. Yeah. Last site I want you to pull up, and I know you think this is the icon of a great site, which is Amazon.com. Right. Amazon and is And explain actually why Amazon. you think it's such a right. good site. It's just really easy to find the books, which is like why you are there. And that's why they sell so much, because it's easy to get to. And you can do things like, you know, searches, of course, right there, and you often want to do searches. Mm -hmm. So let's say we want to search for, I don't know, maybe, maybe Damon's book. But I misspell his name, Danny Gutman, rather than Goodman. Right, Man. right, but it's so, smart enough to figure that out. And I tell you, because I actually tried it, you know, it does bring it up. And a lot of websites, if you misspell, they're just going to say... Yeah, and there we go, figured it yeah, out. Yeah, they're just going to say, no, no, we're not going to sell to you if you're so stupid. Well, you know, all the cute things in the world solve the user's problem. Exactly. Huh? Jacob, thank you very thank much. You, That's it for a look at website design. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week, a cool way to access any website without wires. Don't go away. Now for my pick of the week. If you're hooked on the web and the internet, you always want to have access, but right now that's not so easy. You usually need to be near a network outlet or an RJ11 jack. I've tried web-enabled cell phones, but it's kind of frustrating, but I finally found the perfect solution, and this is it, the Ricochet wireless modem. Ricochet has been around for a while, but it used to be a rather big clunky thing that wasn't too reliable. This is the newest version, small and portable. It weighs less than a pound. There's a much bigger nationwide network out there, and it is fast, up to 128 kilobits per second. Just plug it into the USB port on your laptop, and you can surf the web anywhere, in the back of a cab, in an airplane, while you're on the ground, or sitting out by the swimming pool. 
The service is very good and it is a terrific solution to always having web access on a full-fledged terminal like your laptop. No compromises. Watch multimedia, see full-page color displays, handle frames, Java apps, Flash, all without wires. Using the Ricochet wireless modem is not cheap. It's about $75 a month. But if you're a mobile professional and you want real, fast, wireless web access on your notebook computer, it's probably worth the extra few hundred dollars a year. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. Thanks for joining us. If you have questions about anything you saw on this week's show, please check out our website at computerchronicles.org. And I hope we'll see you here again next week. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by pc to pc the online computer migration service from PC First, moving files, applications, and preferences from your old computer to your new one. Additional support is provided by Upside Events, presenting the Digital Lifestyle Revolution Conference, where people and technology intersect. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-310. 7850. Please specify the show number and the topic.